Hello, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White with OpenXMLdeveloper.org. In this screencast, I am going to discuss some commandlets that are in Power Tools for OpenXML 3.0 that enable you to convert to Base64 encoded ASCII and to convert from Base64 encoded ASCII. There are a number of cases where we want to embed a binary document into our program. We maybe want to put a docx as a template into our PowerShell or our C Sharp code, and then we'll open that document and then we'll make appropriate modifications to it, and then we save it as some different name, so on and so forth. Well, we could write our code to go and look for that document in some location, maybe in the current directory, but this adds a place of possible failure into our program. What happens if that docx didn't get copied to that correct location or if it got deleted? Well, another thing that we can do when we have C Sharp and VB.net is we could take that docx and put it into our code as a resource. In other words, put it into a resource for our .NET application. This is okay, and this is good in a lot of cases, but it means we have to put this document in as a resource. Well, sometimes this might be inconvenient. If you're writing a module to distribute to other developers, then you need to supply them with the instructions to tell them to put such and such a binary document into their resources with such and such a name. Uh, another convenient way to do this is you just put it in as Base64 encoded ASCII as a literal directly in the program. There are the cases with PowerShell and with JavaScript. Well, there is no such thing as binary resources. We could put this docx on some location on the network or we could put it on to some web server somewhere where we could download it. But again, this adds complexity and makes it so that it's possible that things get messed up and then we don't have that document there where we want to have it and our program fails. In these cases, it's often much more convenient just to put it in as a Base64 encoded ASCII string in our program itself. So let's go take a look at these two commandlets, convert to Base64 and convert from Base64. I'm here in the PowerShell integrated scripting environment. I'm in the directory for OpenXML Power Tools examples. I've already imported my module, the OXPT module. If you haven't done so, I recommend that you watch the screencast that is the introduction to Power Tools for OpenXML 3.0. This will show you how to get the OpenXML Power Tools and how to add it as a module into your PowerShell environment. In the examples directory, we have a few documents here, like we have this input1.docx. Well, I can convert to base64 input1.docx. And when I press enter, what we see is, we just see the base64 encoded ASCII for that binary file. Truth be told, this doesn't have anything as such to do with OpenXML. This is just converting any binary file to base64 encoded ASCII. This is all fine and good, but really what we want it as is we want it as a C-sharp literal or as a PowerShell literal or as a VB.NET literal. So there are options on this convert to base64 so I can tell it I want it as a PowerShell literal. And what we see is that it's now output as a here string in PowerShell where it has this at quote at the beginning of the string and it also has the quote at at the end of that base64 encoded string. If we wanted to see it as a C-sharp literal, well, 
Now it has the quote at the beginning and the quote at the end, and further it has the semicolon at the end of the string because that's the way that you write a literal string in C sharp. We look up on top and we also see that it actually has this at quote. It's using the at string syntax for a C sharp literal. It's even more interesting when we look at the JavaScript literal. With JavaScript, you can't have a multi-line literal, but JavaScript engines know how to process this variety of literal in a very efficient manner. Effectively, the virtual machine knows to look at this as a single string. And of course, if we look at it with a vb.net literal, then we see the appropriate ampersands and the vbcrlf constant and the underscore that is the line continuation character for each of these lines in vb.net code. That's all fine and good, but sometimes we actually want the code to do something with that. So if I go back to the C sharp literal version and I can also tell it I want it with code, then we'll see the little bit of C sharp code here that takes that base 64 encoded string and converts it into a memory stream and then opens that memory stream as a word processing document. It then contains a little bit of sample code to tell us how many descendant elements there are in the main document part. Well, I can make use of this. First of all, I can pipe this into the clipboard. I'll start up Visual Studio. I'll create a new application. It's going to be a C-sharp application. Console application is fine. I'll add references to the two assemblies that I need. I need the Windows base assembly, which contains the system.io.packaging namespace. And I've also added the document format.openxml assembly, which contains the OpenXML SDK, which is based on system.io.packaging. I had already copied that code that was generated by the commandlet to the clipboard, as you saw. The only thing that I can see here is I need to put my usings in there for system.io, and I also need using for the OpenXML SDK. Well, I can make use of the feature of Visual Studio that I want to using system.io, and I can right click here and I'll say I want a using document format.openxml.packaging, and now I've got a complete program. Press Control F5, and it tells me that there are 23 elements, descendant elements in that document that I converted to base64 encoded ASCII. So by outputting it as a C-sharp literal and outputting it with code, it gives me all of the little bits of boilerplate code so that I can make my open XML program quite easily using that C sharp literal. As I said, with C sharp, you can also put it in as a binary resource, but this is actually, in a lot of cases, a lot more convenient. With the case of PowerShell, we don't even have that option. Let's go back and make a little PowerShell thing to work with that document, the input one.docx. I'll tell it that I want it to be a PowerShell literal with code and output that to the clipboard. I'll do control N to give myself a new PowerShell module. And what we can see here is that it writes a little bit of PowerShell script here. It sets this B64 variable to our base64 encoded ASCII. And then down at the bottom, it uses convert from base64 and saves it to test dot docx and passes in that base64 encoded ASCII string. So if I press F5 here, sure enough, it created a test.docx. We can see here it has today's date on it. And if I were to go look at test.docx, sure enough, I can open it and it would contain the exact same information as this input one dot docx. So these commandlets enable you to create PowerShell literals, create C-sharp literals, create VB.NET literals, and create JavaScript literals that contain 
binary forms of open XML documents saved as Base64 encoded ASCII. And further, we can convert them from Base64 encoded ASCII and save it back to a binary document using the convert from Base64 commandlet. We'll use these two commandlets in the new docx commandlet, which is going to be the subject of another screencast. I mentioned the new docx commandlet in the introduction to Power Tools for OpenXML 3.0. I'm going to have another screencast that's going to go in depth into that commandlet. Thanks for watching.